Hi there trailer owners. Today in your 2021 Coachman Apex Ultralight, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's Comfort Ride Shock Absorbing System. They connect between brackets that are mounted on top of your axle here on the leaf spring stack, as well as brackets that are attached directly to the frame. With our shock in this location, you can see that when our suspension travels upward, it would compress our shock, dampening the forces that we get on the road. You'll also notice that it is angled slightly towards the center here on our equalizer. Because our axles here with the equalizer, they do kind of work in conjunction with one another. So having the shocks at an angle like this does help out with dampening the transfer of that motion from one shock, from one axle to another, which overall reduces all of that road force from reaching inside the cabin of the trailer. The angle that's best for these is a 20 to 40 degree angle, and you do have the option to choose where you put those here on the frame. In most cases, these are gonna fit on your trailer using the included brackets, as long as you don't have any accessories that are located right around this area. So you do wanna check to make sure you don't have like a uh, propane line that's running down in this location that you need to relocate or anything. But for most, most of your trailers, this is gonna easily bolt right up by drilling out the holes. Again, it's just an inspection to make sure you don't have components in the way. This kit does come with everything that you need to get it installed. You do want to inspect your U-bolts to make sure that you do have about a full inch sticking up above the nut. If not, you may need to replace those U-bolts if they're too short. That just depends on your particular trailer and what the manufacturer decided to use. On our customer's trailer today, we did have to replace those. And there's also some drilling involved in the frame, so you want to make sure that you do have nice drill bits available. And due to the location of it, having extremely short and excessively long drill bits in a 5 16 size makes this job a lot easier. Now that we've covered some of the features of our shock absorber kit, why don't you follow along with me and we'll get them installed together so you can have the confidence to do it at home. We'll begin our installation by parking our trailer onto level ground. Your driveway, in most cases, is a great spot. And lifting it up and removing our wheels. You'll want to jack it up and support the frame with jack stands. You have to get it high enough off the ground to where your wheels are off the ground so you can get those pulled off. And once you've got those pulled off here, you are set up to begin working. We're using a lift here on ours to hold ours up, but again, it's gonna be very similar at home. You're just not gonna have the cross beams with the lift. You'll have just these jack stands here underneath your frame. Now the jack stands that I've got here, these are just precautionary jack stands that are underneath the axles because we're gonna be taking the U-bolts loose. And once we take those loose, the axle can drop down. But I also have my jack here underneath the axle, and I'm gonna be moving this jack around and keeping it under the axle that I'm working on because the jack stands are really just supplementary in case something happens, my jack were to, something were to happen to the jack where the fluid leaked out, we got a jack stand here to support it. So we're gonna remove the nuts here on top to take these U-bolts off. The U-bolts that are on your trailer aren't gonna be long enough to accept the brackets for the comfort ride system. So we are gonna be replacing these U-bolts. You can get new U-bolts here at each trailer. And we'll, once we get these off, we'll show you the new U-bolts. We're using a three quarter inch socket to remove the nuts. They are going to be on there a little snug, so you'll probably have to start it by hand. And then your tool can zip it off there usually the rest of the way. So now we've got these all zipped loose. We can pull our U-bolts out of there. They just pull down. They're usually a little bit stiff, so just kind of work them back and forth and just pull downward, come out of there. You can also kind of rock the uh, top piece here some. Sometimes that helps or you pull it over like this you can kind of get a little bit of a bang motion on it to help persuade it off of there so now we've got our factory bracket out of the way this is your comfort ride your shock bracket you'll have four of these in the kit and they are going to be specific to a certain location so we've got them sat out here for the axle so this is going to be for the front axle towards the front we want this bracket to be angled down towards our equalizer here and we also want to make sure that the holes are flat facing towards the center of our trailer like that and the one for the axle behind this is gonna face like this. So these brackets are gonna be angled like this. On the opposite side of our trailer, we want the same story to be mimicked over there. So we'll take our bracket now. We'll set it on top of our leaf spring. And you can see there's an alignment pin there that does line up with the hole in the bracket. We can then set our factory bracket right back on top. Grab our new U-bolts. We'll go up through the bottom, through our shock bracket and our factory one, and then we'll secure it with the new nuts that came included with the U-bolts. 
We'll do the same thing with the other two sets of holes right over on the other side of our leaf spring stack. Once we got them all started, we can go back and tighten them down. You do want to kind of go back and forth to try and tighten them down evenly so you have roughly the same amount of U-bolt sticking up above each nut. So now we'll torque our hardware to the specifications found in your comfort ride instructions. You'll receive some extension brackets that come in your kit. They look like this. They'll have four holes in them and you'll notice that one of the holes has a larger spacing between it than the remaining ones. That guy goes at the bottom. We're then gonna take the two top holes here. We're gonna line those up with the two holes in the bracket that we just installed. Our bolt's gonna slide through the extension. It's gonna line up with the hole in our bracket. There's two holes here, so we wanna line those up. So we're gonna slide both of them through. And then on the opposite side, we're gonna secure it with a nylon locking nut. In your kit, you're gonna get two nuts that seem very similar in size, but one of those is metric, the other standard. The standard ones, which is what we're using here, are slightly taller of a nut than the metric ones are gonna be a little bit shorter. The shorter nuts go with the longer bolts that are included with the kit for securing your shock to the brackets. And now we'll go back and snug these up using a three quarter inch socket and wrench. And we'll go back and torque this hardware as well. This bracket is completed now and how it needs to be. So we're gonna perform the same procedures here on the other axle on this side, and then we'll do it to both of the axles on the other side as well. So now we're underneath the trailer. We've got it back on the ground to where it's sitting level and the suspension is fully loaded once again. We need it to be in this position so we can properly mount our upper bracket because we're gonna have to drill that out and put it in the correct location ourselves. So these shocks here, you see they have a strap on them. This strap is actually holding our shock at a very specific length. You can see here there's an arrow where it says install height. So you can easily set this back up if your strap falls off or something. The length is about 14 and a half inches as well to give you an idea to ensure you've got it at the correct location. This is the installed height because we need to be able to ensure that it can stretch out far enough for our suspension to travel downward, but also to compress enough when our suspension travels upward. So that's why we gotta have this set position. So we'll start by mounting the bottom onto our lower bracket here. We're taking the longer bolts that come in our kit. I put a flat washer on it already. We're gonna go from the outside of our trailer towards the inside, sliding it in. After we slide our bolt through, we'll take our spacer, slide it in place. Then with our shock where we can read the lettering, we're gonna slide it on to that bolt as well. This can just kind of hang over here to the side for a moment. And then you'll follow that up with another flat washer and a nylon locking nut. We do want this to be somewhat loose so we can still pivot our shock, but we wanna get rid of a lot of that play so it's not too sloppy, because if it's sloppy, it can, it can adversely affect finding the correct location for the upper bracket. So we're just gonna run this down until we've got most of the play taken out. We're gonna use a three quarter inch socket and wrench again. And this is what we're kind of looking for right here. This is just barely snugged up to the point where our shock can easily rotate up and down, but it does kind of hold it in that position for us, which makes it easier for finding the correct location. So first, before we put it up at the location it's gonna go in, we're gonna take our upper brackets here, and we do need to cut out a small section of the underbelly here and ensure that this can sit flat against the bottom. So to do that, First, we need to figure out where it's gonna sit. So we're gonna be attaching it temporarily to our shock here. So grab your long bolt. It's gonna use the same hardware as on the bottom. So we're gonna slide our bolt with the washer on it through the bracket, follow it up with a spacer. It goes through the shock and then a flat washer and an nylon knot locking nut will secure it. Now these ones here, I don't bother really snugging down at this time because we're just gonna be 
holding it up there for a quick measurement check. So our bracket here, it looks like it's gonna line up at about this location right here to where it's flush against the bottom and flush against the outside. So now that we know this location, we'll take our razor knife, we're gonna trim out the, this underbelly shield here so that way it'll sit flush against the metal. So now that we've got that held up, we're just taking our razor knife and we're just gonna cut around the bracket here. And this little piece ends here, so I'll just start right there. That's really all we needed to do. Make our slits. And then we can just pull this off of here after you've made your cuts. Now, if you have any of these guys on here, there's a couple of ways you can remove these. You can either pull them out with a claw hammer type tool, or you can just grind them off flush. Whichever way works out best for the type of tools you've got at home is what I would recommend. So now that we've cut off the area here, cut it out, we can see that our bracket sits nice and flush against the bottom of our frame. We're also kind of making the outside of the bracket flush with the outside of the frame there to make sure that it's even going down. Once we've got that kind of in the correct position there though where we're flush on the outside of the frame and flush against the bottom we'll take our paint stick we'll then take our paint stick and we're gonna mark out on the frame I just like to just color in the whole slot and the hole and we're gonna do that for each one in our upper bracket here. Now we've got our marks where we need to drill out for our holes for our upper bracket. So we're gonna repeat this same process at each axle, putting the shock in place, getting the upper bracket mocked up, cutting out anything in that location and making our marks. Once you've got those made, we can then drill out our holes using a 5 16 drill bit. You wanna drill out those holes that you made marks on and then anywhere in the slot there to where it'll fit in those holes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make all the marks, then I'm gonna lift the trailer back up and take the wheels back off because I find it a lot easier to drill once you've got it up in the air. But we have to have it down back on the ground with our wheels on in this loaded uh, position like this in order to get the correct location for this upper bracket. But once you've made those marks again, we don't need to be in this position. We can return and raise it up so things are a lot easier on us. So now we'll take our drill bit and we're gonna drill out the holes we'd marked. We can, I like to start with the single hole first and we're gonna use a 5 16 drill bit to drill that out. Now with a regular size drill bit here, you can see we are gonna have just a slight angle. A little bit of an angle is okay, but if you've got an extreme angle, you may need to modify your bit by either cutting it down extremely small and using a, a right angle drill or by purchasing an excessively long 5 16 bit so you can get a straighter angle on it that will go up. So we're just gonna drill this guy out and then we'll get it in place. Now that we've got that one drilled out, what I like to do is take the bracket and I'll use one of the self tappers to mount that one up, make sure that all my marks are lined up. And that way I can use the bracket as a template to drill out my remaining holes. It just helps hold your drill bit in there easier when making out, when drilling them out. So now I'm gonna take the self tapping screw that comes included with the kit. We just line it up with the hole there. We're gonna use a 9 16th socket to run it up to make its own threads. So once we got it up and then made threads, we can just take it back out and then we'll use it to secure the bracket. It's just easier to make the threads without holding your bracket in place. That's why I like to run them up first. So now we got our bracket. I just took it off the shock. We can, we're gonna mount the shocks up later. It's just easier to do it that way. So we'll line our bracket up here on the outside, thread our bolt in, and then we'll tighten this one down. And that's good there. We're wanting to get it roughly to where it's roughly flush with the frame so it's nice and even. That looks pretty good. So at this point now, just snug this one up just a little more. It'll hold the bracket in place. 
We'll now drill out the remaining holes and then just run them in just like we did with this one here. We'll repeat the same procedure for the other bracket that goes on this side of the trailer and then we'll do the two that go on the other side. Once you've got your outside ones in, I do like to run the bolts in on both of those just to help keep the bracket securely in place. We'll then just move into the inside and then perform the same procedures here to drill out the remaining holes. You can put it anywhere in the slot. Just make sure you do have it fully enclosed. You don't want to have it to where you're right on the outside and your bolt's partially not inside the frame. So just make sure you do actually have a full hole in it. Because if you look at this slot here, it does actually go a little bit past the edge of the frame. So we don't want to drill right here on the edge. We want it to be in the frame itself. We can then go back and torque all these to the specifications found in our instructions. We're back underneath, so we're now going to just take this shock here and we're going to reinstall it into the middle hole. You might be wondering, well, hey, if you take it and you turn it up, it seems like it lines up with this hole. You got to remember that when we had set the position for this bracket, we had our suspension loaded. Now we're back up in the air, so our axle's hanging down, so that changes our distance a little bit. So since it doesn't line up with the hole, it's easy to fix that though, because we're ready to basically finish up the install here. So we can go ahead and rip that off. That's going to allow our shock to extend. So then we can slide the bolt through with the washer on it, just like we had it before. We'll then slide our spacer on it, and then we can grab our shock. And if we need to, you can push it back in to manipulate it into position. So that way your bolt will slide on through. Then on the other side, we're gonna follow that up with a flat washer and a nylon locking nut. And again, this is the shorter one, like we talked about, as this is a metric bolt, so it needs a metric nut. Those started on there, we'll tighten it down with a 19 millimeter socket and wrench. A three quarter will also work. And then we'll do the same thing with our other shock. We can now go back and torque all of our hardware to the specifications found in our instructions. Now that we've got all of our hardware tightened down, our installation is basically complete. We can go ahead and put our wheels back on, get it back on the ground, torque those wheels, and we're ready to hit the road. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's Comfort Ride shock absorbing system on our 2021 Coachman Apex Ultralight.